right, let's talk DIY power wall. By the way, subscribers today. If you've been following my projects, you'd know that I have at least two DIY power walls in my life. One is mine, it's here. This is like a low budget, super DIY concept that I'm doing and I'm kind of stuck at the moment. Uh, I haven't been able to finish that. And uh, the other one that it's more legit and it just uses stuff off the shelf with less hacking, uh, the one that Michael has down there at EV West. Those are two different types of DIY power walls, but they essentially will do the same thing at the end of the day. Take energy either from grid or you can store energy from solar panels and then use that whenever you need it. Now, the last video I made on a power wall was the one where we walked you to all the components down there in San Diego. And that video has gotten good response. It's got over 200,000 views. And a lot of people are asking for a connecting diagram along with the parts and links to where people can buy them. Today, Michael actually sent me that diagram. He's been working on and off on it. And he had a couple of revisions and he finally published that on his site. And so today we're gonna go over it, uh, show you how it is connected. So let's go through this. All right, the first thing that you will see here on this diagram are the three solar panels. Those solar panels are connected in series, three of them. I believe these are 250 watt panels. They're 30 to 40 volts. And so connecting them in series will produce about 90 to 110 volts, something like that. Those are going through 30 amp uh, fuses into the Schneider MPTT 150-60 solar charge controller. Michael has nine panels, and so the way you connect nine panels is you can parallel sets of three for a total of nine. He has, in the future, has plans to actually double that. So he is going to have 18 panels up in the roof. But then from the charge controller through the DC out, it goes through a uh, 200 amp, 150 volt fuse into the battery packs. Down here at the bottom, it's a 57 volt battery pack, 21 uh, kilowatt hours pictured here. Michael has a bigger one. He has 11 modules instead of the seven modules pictured here. And so his system is uh, a bit bigger, but I think what he drew here is the smallest possible configuration that you can use. And of course, those are the 57 volt uh, smart Tesla modules that Michael sells on his website. Then from there, you will see that, that those same cables that go into the battery also go into the hybrid inverter charger. This is uh, connects XW6848, or I think it's an XW6048. I think those one is the older version, the other one is the newer version. Um, and so that actually feeds the inverter and then out of the inverter will come out the, the AC side uh, using 10 gauge wire and then through 240 amp breakers into just an AC outlet, a NEMA 1450 outlet that he has. That's where he has connected a level two EVSC. That's how you charge your cars. Um, everything has a green line or green cable so everything is grounded. Um, most of this stuff in the center is connected inside of a NEMA four rated junction box. And the batteries themselves are inside of a NEMA four rated battery enclosure. This next image here will have annotation. If you scroll your mouse over any of the parts in this image, it will take you to a place where you can purchase those components. So there you go, this is a pretty simple simple system um there's really not much else to it my diy is going to be very similar to this except using different components but there is really nothing to this type of system this is an off-grid uh, backup system that he uses and it's big enough to charge uh, electric vehicles um, this one pictured here is 21 kilowatt hours of storage but you can 
go bigger by adding more of these modules and you can just keep adding pretty much on forever if, if you want to have a large system you can go up to 100 kilowatts if you wanted to um, by adding more and more of those battery modules the same thing for the solar panels you can add sets of three and then parallel them um, so that you can get more energy off of the sun if you max out this charge controller then you can also set up a separate system that just parallels onto the battery and so you'll have two separate systems charging the same battery and so you'll get twice the rate of charge for that battery um, and so of course this system it's scalable in many many ways and all these parts are pretty much off the shelf um, Hopefully the next video that we make on this project is going to be going through the settings in this particular uh, components that he used. Hopefully we'll kind of walk you through what he did to set it up so that batteries don't, don't get overcharged or over discharge. Okay, till next video, we'll see you then. Today we're going to show you how to install a chill plate. First thing to do, we have to clean both surfaces. All right, so the next step is to apply the silicone. Black, high-performance RTV silicone. A mounting to that controller. Let the silicone set. Tomorrow, we'll, we'll install it on top of our controller plate. All right, Michael, this concludes the first week. Let's get out of here, man.